Yeah, there we go. All right, so I guess uh, let's start with your one this time, yeah? Because you, you, you said you were clamoring to listen uh, to it all so day. Episode four, it's already been, God, yeah. a month? That's kind of weird. I always look forward to these. <laughs> I always look forward to Because, like, it's, oh, it's yeah, cool. It's, it's like, it's just, it's just cool being exposed to new music like this. And every time they've been bangers. So, um, nothing more good fun times. than swapping some tunes. Right. <laughs> Let's, uh, <laughs> let, uh, let me know when you're ready and I'll, uh, I, I am indeed ready. So, uh, let's hop into it. Yeah. One, two, three, go. Cynthia. Oh, it's that's something. I get like sort of like Blade Runner vibes from this. I don't know, like a is this a, is this an indie game? Uh, I believe so. I'm not entirely sure, but I think so. Is it High Polite Drifter? No, no, because it sounds like something from that game, which also has an amazing soundtrack. Kind of spoilers, but. I really don't think you're gonna get this. <laughs> but if you do, then wow. It's not Fortnite again, is it? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Plot twist, God, it's man. all if, Fortnite. If, if, if Fortnite was this, I would be not on this podcast right now. Right. This is pretty sick. Mm. I'm turn this up a little bit. Just, I'm, I'm just kind of enjoying it. <laughs> oh man, I've been wanting to hear this. Kind of Doom vibes, but I'm sure it's not Doom. Like, can't be. Fantastic guess. Mick Gordon? I said the same thing. Not Mick Gordon. Like, yeah. I also said it sounded like Doom. Right? It just sounds so like professional. <laughs> no, it is. The production is really on point. It's like a playground for your ears. Right. Really good mixing. That was great. Oh, it's not over. Oh, it's not over. Are there movements to this? <laughs> oh, gosh. Movements closer to hell. <laughs> this is sick. Something's looming. This is super atmospheric. Is it a recent game? Or pretty old? I'm pretty sure it's recent. I can check in a minute. I'm, I want to say it's like in the past two years. I don't know much about it besides the name of the game and the composer.
trying to think the genre, like either survival horror or action or first person shooter. I'm trying to pin it down. Could be so many things. FPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I'm pretty sure. Like 90% sure. An indie first person shooter in the past couple of years. <laughs> That's pretty damn sick. <laughs> oh, the guitar sounds so good. It's, it's, it's very, very Doom. It's very Doom. <laughs> that full bodied guitar sound. Very Killer Instinct as well. Just very mid corner. <laughs> Those hi hats going at the speed of light. Yeah. So good. Was. What do you want me to tell you, or do you want to take some uh, stabs I, at it? Oh, well, I mean, indie first-person <laughs> shooter from the f first cu past couple of years clearly has some decent production value to it because uh, that twenty twenty-one, twenty-two-one. That was not made like on a budget. That that is a like that is a pro right there. Um, I mean, we talked a bit about Ultra Kill last time, but I don't think it's Ultra Kill because Ultra Kill has a very like retro sound to it. I could see uh, the comparison as that same yeah. sort of like yeah. production and wow factor. This is uh, a game called Viscera Fest. One word. I've never heard of it. I've, I've actually never so, heard of it. According to uh, Google, it is a sci-fi fantasy arena FPS with minor collectathon elements, fights through hordes of aliens and eldritch monstrosities, wielding a slew of powerful weapons. I've never actually heard of this game, and yeah, when I when I look at the uh, screenshot it does look like doom like like clearly that was the um the inspiration mm -hmm. behind this but uh i'd never heard of this actually yep me neither <laughs> until uh someone sent it to me and like, what the hell is this and why does it sound so professional <laughs> yeah <laughs> it like, sounds incredible like, like everything about it just hit home like the production was top level it had a real sort of atmosphere to it. it had a real flow to it that's pretty much all there is to say it just <laughs> just hits really hard and it's it's definitely one of my favorites mm. because it's it's it came out of nowhere yeah, yeah it's yeah. actually one of my lowest viewed videos which makes it even that much cooler yeah, I bet. Because, like, Viscera, like, if someone said, oh, I'm listening to X from, is it like, I don't know that game. I've never even heard mm -hmm. of that. Like, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I hope when we put this up, it gets a bit more traction because that deserves to be heard. That's that's, that's exactly cool. what I said. That's why I'm yeah. doing it. It deserves <laughs> yeah. it. It's, it's, the developer and the composer both, like, reached out to me afterwards and they're like, oh, man, thanks for checking out our small game. Like, what? Like, we should be. <laughs> what are you doing? Go make billions of dollars. I know, right? This is the thing. Like, I, 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 I was talking with with my wife the other day about like, it's kind of arbitrary about who becomes super successful and who doesn't in the entertainment industry, whether <clears> it's <throat> music or movies or whatever. I mean, look, there has to be that talent there. G generally, not always. The reason we talked about this is because um, Limp Biscuit came on the radio and we're like, "How the hell did Fred Durst get so popular?" Like when the guy like what it like he doesn't he's not particularly creative right. he's not particularly right place, right time. exactly right place right time and like there has to be an element of luck I think with Fred it must have been like ninety nine point nine percent luck <laughs> but yeah. I think luck is always the overriding factor about whether you make it big even if you're super talented I think like it's always at least sixty percent luck even if you're mm -hmm. like prodigious in your talent That's yeah because you it can is. obviously get that luck but then. If you have nothing to show for it, then that luck will just dry up really quick. Right. So yeah, this surface. That's called a. Uh, I think it's. I believe this is called "Through the Looking Glass." Is the name of the song. Through the Looking Glass. I'll definitely check it out. That was sick. Thank you for introducing me. Um, this one, I, I, I kind of, in a way, 
chose it for you. Mm. We'll ex- I'll, ex- I'll explain later. But I chose All this right. one for you. Thank you may you. not like it. You may, you may love it. Who knows? I appreciate the thought. I'm, I'm even more excited now. Let's uh, hop into it. One, two, three, go. Oh, I, I I do love this. <laughs> That's beautiful. Good to hear. Mmm. That's lovely. It's good pipe smoking music, you know? I was just thinking, actually. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Vibes are immaculate right now. Mm, that's really, really gorgeous. I'm gonna say thank you on their behalf. <laughs> no, this is really good. I didn't make it. <laughs> uh, this is another indie game. Guess and no. Ooh, a bit of a shift. Great. Back to the flute. This really is so gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Oh no, it's, is it coming to an end? <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, it is extremely too short. I could luxuriate in that all day. That's, that's such a beautiful atmosphere and a sound. I'm, I'm trying to think what kind of genre. Like, is it a JRPG? It is. I will admit I, this, though. I don't think this sounds very much like a lot of their catalog, though. It's pretty unique to their own sound, I would say. Is it... Hitoshi Sakamoto? No. Mm-hmm. Well, who's, who's, what game is that? That's Final Fantasy XII. Hmm. Well, your guesses are, are pretty warm. If you want to take one more. It's that sort of area. I mean, you know, like, you, you could go for real, real heavy. It's like Nobu Uematsu, but I don't think it's Uematsu. Like Yoko Shimomura, potentially. This, but I don't is, think this is Nobu Uematsu. This is Nobu Uematsu. What? What? Wow. This was a game called Lost Odyssey, a JRPG Lost. exclusive to the Xbox 360. Lost Super. Odyssey. Lost yeah, it's Odyssey. All... Lost Odyssey. It's... Have you now, played it? Have you heard about it? Well, I've heard about it. It's um because the ex director of Final Fantasy, um, made by uh, Mistwalker, wasn't it? Right. Because this is this is made up. This is by a lot of devs for Final mm. Fantasy games. And I guess around that time where Final Fantasy started going down this like hard sci-fi route with sort of like, you know, FF13 um, and whatnot, they kind of branched out to make their own development team. They weren't really on board with the vision for Final Fantasy. And mm. they, they started this um, group called Mistwalker. Um, and oh, today I learned. So I'm yeah, guessing this yeah. was, well, since 360, I'm guessing this is like, what, like 2000? Yeah, five yeah. through like eight or something like that. This was released in two thousand eight. Yeah, so oh, there you go. And and one of the writers is Hironobu Sakaguchi, who is like the oh. guy for Final Fantasy One 
to nine, right? He was one of the guys behind Final Fantasy Nine. So I thought this right. game is really good, actually. Uh, it's... I've, I haven't even looked that much into it. I just I, I knew the only reason I even knew about it is because of Nabuo, and I was like, wait, what? And then I found out it was like an exclusive, but I didn't know it was all like basically FF team. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, this is like. I wouldn't say it's Final Fantasy and all but name because it is has its own vibe, but it, you can oh, see yeah. the you can see the talent behind the older Final Fantasy games in this. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't played much of it, but what I did, it's like it's got a very, very like kind of defined atmosphere to it and very clear world building and um, a, a, quite a mature storyline actually. It's about a man who like lives forever and he's trying to like deal with that you know it's it's about the the Whoa. curse of it the curse of immortality pretty heavy stuff um well, so, the title makes a lot more sense now right both, both game title and song title song title is called never ending journey there you go <laughs> game is lost odyssey that's a really cool premise i've always wanted to actually play it all the way through um and yeah i um I heard it had this sort of very ethereal sort of soundtrack to it. It had a very good soundtrack, which I hadn't heard anything from. There mm. you go. It, it sounds like a lost classic from a lost JRPG masterpiece, which is exactly what it is. I heard only two songs, this one and I forgot the other one, but I just remember both of them just sounding very, both are just great. Like, mm. it seems like Nobuo kind of almost went out of his way to not make it sound FF-like. Mm. like. Like, like, for example, I've now been here. I mean, people have been hearing him for decades. I've been hearing him for one year of my life. But mm. in that year, I've kind of developed somewhat, especially a musician, I can kind of pick up on his traits or his thingies and mm. little doodads. This, I had no clue. I'm like, what? That's him? Yeah. It doesn't, it just sounds so, Um, I don't know. It, because Dif- gener- generally he goes for very, like, melodic, melody-heavy tracks, right? Sort of like... And this is, I mean, this does have a strong melody to it, but it's a bit too, what would I say? Like ethereal and maybe maybe a bit too. I get what you mean, yeah. Um, it's, and as you say, it's Nobuo Matsu, yeah, like I get it. But no, again, I, I didn't, I thought this is probably not Nobuo Matsu, but he also probably felt liberated that he's not working on a Final Fantasy game. You know? That's how I, I see it. Right, you can see little strands of Uematsu's DNA because it is Uematsu, but you can also sense a, there's a there's a spirit of like liberation about this. Like I can hmm. do what I want. It's great, and and the flute is is um yeah you can't perfo- go wrong with the flute. The performances is so good though. I wonder who actually played the flute on that. Um, do you know? I was I was so impressed by this uh, song because the games that I play nowadays is strictly based on OST. Right. So as soon as I heard those two, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I need to find this. I'm hoping it was on Steam, and to my demise, it's Xbox exclusive. That's the on one thing. Console. I really want to play it, but it's so hard to get a hold of this game. It is the definition of a lost classic. It's Lost Odyssey, the lost classic, right? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lost Odyssey within itself. And I feel like yeah. it's a shame because, like, it's it's... And there's so many niches going on. Like, we have a JRPG, which is already a niche, and then Lost Odyssey, which may be a fraction of the people I've even heard about, let alone played. And then I feel like I feel like this soundtrack has been heard by just not enough people, I guess. Yeah. I can put it. This is the kind of thing I would love, but again, I, I'd never heard it. And like I'm pretty deep into, you know, the JRPG rabbit hole. And the, mm-hmm. I, I passed this over, you know, but also especially because the Xbox wasn't really known. Not at for, all. For, for, especially in Japan, it's like not many people who are into JRPGs would have bought an Xbox. So it was it was a strange choice of console, right? I'm sure Microsoft must have paid like an, for an exclusivity contract. And at this point, just like free the damn game, give it a Steam release, like do something with it, you know? Yeah, um, I've, I've seen screenshots and I'm like, I would play this. I would definitely love to hear it, but I would yeah. definitely play it. I really want to hear more. It's it's such. It's such a shame that I just can't, but I know. stuff like that, it just reminds me just of cool, like older movies. And I'm always a fan of the flu, of course, when it gets heavy too. So I like the, I don't know. I just really, really like this song. No, I hear you. It's, it's such a buried, you know, treasure. I hear you. I hear you. I'm um, bummed that I only just listened to that, but I'm also really glad because it's a great song. I hope more people listen to it. So, um, 
yeah, Lost Odyssey. Let, let's rail for a re-release or something. It's a shame, you know. Let's, use, let's use our combined clout. <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> let let our clout combine. <laughs> Start the journey. Hashtag Lost Odyssey two. Right. On different consoles. Uh, yeah, I know. I hope it's backwards compatible at least. I hope if you buy like an Xbox Series, whatever, you can play this, or you can. Is it? Is it? <laughs> Let's hope so. I don't know. I've never owned an Xbox, but that would be great. If if that was the case, that would change things up. But then again, a 360 these days can't be that much. Right. Probably like, I don't know. But Still. I'm jealous of whoever got to play it and experience it. And yeah. I don't know. Great, great song. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more, you can check out Aria's YouTube channel at That Blasted Salami. A reminder that our episodes are split between my channel and his. So I will see you over there.